I did. Um, and did you get the provisos? No. Is that a yes? Okay, let's go ahead and uh, call the committee meeting to order. <clears throat> this is a meeting of the Transit and Guest Tax Committee. Sorry. What committee members state your appearances, please? Elaine Schwartz. Nathan Schmidt. Thank you. Have all conferees signed the sign-in sheet? If you haven't, uh, please do so so your attendance can be, can be noted. First order of business is the... Uh, uh, 2014 transient guest tax allocations committee members I've handed out or the, uh, has been handed out the transient guest tax summary the results of the August 13 2013 work session uh, just could go over for the benefit of uh, the conferees the uh, and correct me if, if I'm not reading this correctly the uh, the committee had recommended to visit Topeka $1,050,000 subject to a proviso to visit Topeka re as a condition of funding. The visit Topeka bid fund, $175,000. Um, Fifty thousand to Expo Center. Three hundred and forty thousand to Heartland Park. Um, we have twenty thousand to TPAC. Am I reading that correctly, mm -hmm. Jeff? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and Great Overland Station, ninety-four thousand dollars. Riverfront Park, one hundred and six thousand dollars. Internal transfers to projects of historical asset fund, 115000 um, No money was allocated to wayfinding signs. It was originally part of the allocation, but it was uh, deleted. And then the uh, gen uh, general fund, transfer to the general fund for the zoo, um, was bumped up to $200,000. Sunflower soccer projects, $350,000 for a total of $2.5 million. And we began with a projected uh, beginning balance of $2,100,000 plus the three hundred fifty dollars for the Sunflower soccer. Is that correct, Jeff? My did I state that so correctly? We're actually projecting to end fiscal 13 with just shy of $150,000 in fund balance in that fund. Okay. So as a, that, that would be a, a reasonable starting point to consider as you think about allocations for next year. Okay. Committee members have any questions about what, what we have before us? Mr. Chairman, I might add at, sure. at our last meeting, we did talk about the fact <clears throat> that we'd revise downward the projections for fiscal 13 collections. Um, this uh, current committee level column and the, and the TGT committee column both contemplate the receipt of $2,150,000 in the transit guest tax receipts that are not related to Sunflower Soccer, so the base 6%. Uh, we're projecting collections of right about $2 million for fiscal 13, so it may be prudent to, to think about how we want to handle a situation that might arise where we'd be short of that forecast in 14 like we were in 13. Mr. Colson, could you uh, speak to the, uh, the proviso to, to visit Topeka 
in our contract whether that came to fruition or not? Yeah, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. And uh, <coughs> Terry Cook's in the room also <coughs> has been participating in several conversations pertaining to the proviso. Yeah. Um, I believe the, the most succinct way of stating it is the proviso probably is not necessary. And I believe that Council Member Hiller, um, who had uh, championed the concept of the proviso, agrees that uh, the concerns that were stated and covered by the proviso are now fully represented in the contract that would be signed. And um, I, I feel very confident stating on her behalf um, that, that she does not believe that the proviso is necessary. Okay, all right. Uh, Councilwoman Schwartz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jim, can you kind of refresh this? I, from what I remember, the proviso was to make sure something about outcomes or that it was what they said they were gonna do, they do. Is that, can you refresh this on, on what the proviso was for? Uh, yes, and I'm gonna do a horrible job at the details because I don't have it sitting in front of me, but generally speaking, um, the proviso was specifically to ensure that that visit to Topeka in the, in the uh, implementation of the, of the plan uh, really had an appropriate focus on activities, uh, specifically out outlining some metrics that would be achieved and also that there would be some, some um, strategic initiatives from a tourism perspective. Um, if, if it's appropriate, Mr. Chair and, and Councilwoman, um, I think that maybe Mr. Cook could add some additional information if, if that's an appropriate action. Certainly would. Mr. Cook, would you like to address the committee? Thank you very much. Is this on or green lights on? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we've met with uh, Councilman uh, Hiller and uh, Mr. Colson. We uh, worked through the details of the proviso. Uh, Ms. Hiller was very interested in knowing uh, that we were reaching out for uh, general tourists to come to the area, families uh, in our marketing plan as we presented. Uh, we, we are doing that, reached out. So a lot of the things that uh, she was interested in doing, we are covering in our marketing plan. She also was interested in uh, surveying, reporting back on our activities, what our visitors thought about uh, Topeka. And so we have implemented uh, some surveying that we'll be doing uh, throughout, the, throughout the year. In person, we'll be mailing out surveys as well as taking it from our website. So uh, we met uh, last week, we're able to make sure in the contract that we had the, the best parts of that proviso that were included in our reporting that you receive each quarter. Okay, and that's even better having it in a contract. That's oh, right. Good. Good. <clears throat> Any other questions with Mr. Cook? Anything else on that issue, Mr. Colson? No, I believe that uh, it's mm. covered. All right. Mm. And Jeff, you mentioned the uh, um, projected receipts maybe a, bit, a little bit less. Any recommendations as to how we might want to handle this in terms of the allocations? I think it's always easier to revise people's allocations upward if we have positive surprises in revenues rather than making allocations downward. You know, as we saw this year, we tend not to have a very good trend analysis until very far into the fiscal year. And I think that makes it challenging for people to plan uh, when they've got a full year budget, expecting 100% allocation. We come back to them in September, October and say, oh, by the way, we're gonna have to short you and in order to get uh, our budget balanced by the end of the year, we're gonna have to short you over four or five months to make that happen. So uh, I'm, my thought as a starting point would be to presume 2014 receipts at roughly where we expect 2013 to end, which is right about $2 million mm -hmm. on the base, 6% um, transient guest tax, and uh, allocate accordingly. Of course, Sunflower, the deal there is we basically pay over in debt service what right. we get, so we, we can work that out. If right. <clears throat> so based on that, would we need to go back to the proposed allocations and cut them by $100,000? By actually 150,000 total. 150? Yes, sir. <clears throat> what does the committee want to do? <clears throat> 
is, do if we need a motion, I'll make a motion to, to reduce that the sunflower solid. What is it, two hundred thousand? Then it's we'd actually mm -hmm. be reducing the, the sunflower soccer number would come down a little bit, but the the broader concern is everything else but sunflower soccer um, relies mm -hmm. on a receipts projected of two million one fifty. So how do you want to divide that in reductions? I'm sorry, excuse me, I misstated. Plans on collections of two million even. It was budgeted at two million one hundred thousand, so it is a one hundred thousand dollar reduction. Right. My apologies. That's what I thought. Okay. So it's one hundred thousand dollars. Okay, that's what I thought. Well, we can't reduce sunflower soccer, isn't that a sunflower legally we didn't dedicate it? Pass through. Yeah. So after the after our last conversation this meeting, I sent you a follow-up to the handout. So I'll retract my motion until we figure out what, what we need to do to make the numbers so retracted. agree. <laughs> so let's start in the fiscal, the fiscal 13 projected column. Uh, we show they're taking actions to come down to uh, effectively the net income that the council had budgeted overall for the transient guest tax fund. And that generates the roughly $150,000 fund balance at the bottom $146,748. Wait, where, where are you? I'm right in the middle of the page in the fiscal 13 projected column. And if you follow that all the way to the bottom, you can see we end up. Oh, 146? Yeah, with okay. that roughly $150,000. Mm, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. If we carry that number up to the very <coughs> far right column, the fiscal 14 <coughs> projected column, right. you can see then we revised the base transient guest tax collections down to 200000 We've revised the, the soccer collections <coughs> down proportionately as well. Then uh, we've made pro rata reductions across the allocations that, that you started with in the grant section while leaving the transfer section alone. There's one, uh, there's one uh, item in the transfer section that bears a quick conversation and that's the Historic Preservation Fund. That's actually a calculated amount and the calculation is one-sixth of the base transient guest tax collections, so the equivalent of a penny's worth of transient guest tax collections, less the allocations to Great Overland Station and Riverfront Park. So you can see that at a two thousand, I'm sorry, two million dollar total transient guest tax collection, base collection amount, that allocation to the Historic Preservation Fund would actually be one hundred thirty-three thousand three hundred thirty-three dollars. So if we make all those changes, second to the last line in that far right column shows net income basically of zero. There's seventy-two dollars left on there, which puts us at the same ending balance projected at the end of 14 as we're roughly we're going to start. We think we're going to start at the beginning of uh, 2014. So if you want, if the, if the committee's uh, intent were to allocate funds and end up without a draw on fund balance, this would be an approach that it could take to do that based okay. upon an assumption of $2 million in, in general trans okay. tax collections. Okay. What's the committee's preference on the reductions? Do we want to um, do we want to proceed on the basis of two million dollar base rather than twenty one hundred? <coughs> if so, then we're going to need to make some reductions of a hundred thousand dollars. Let's have Jenny make some copies to be to be distributed while we 
look at this. This is the first time we've seen this, by the way. Short. Thank you. Um, Jeff, I'm still a little confused when you're saying we need to reduce by 100,000 um, because you've got a, 146, 820 would be the balance of the fund at the end of the of fiscal year 14. <clears throat> but where are where on this sheet is that you know showing that we don't have the income of a hundred thousand that we need to be so if you compare the fiscal 13 projected column in the middle mm -hmm. and you see the one million nine ninety five mm -hmm. that's where we're projecting to end um, our our base transient guest tax collections for fiscal 13 our fiscal 14 budget as adopted showed a revenue projection of 2.1 so that's the roughly $100,000 difference. Okay, right here. That would be a pretty substantial amount of growth for this, for this revenue source. Mm -hmm. And so my suggestion then is to move over to the far right column and presume that 2014 on the revenue side will look like 2013 and start with a presumption of $2 million. Okay. And if we do better than that, then certainly we can come back to this committee um, in the late summer next year and have a conversation about potentially allocating more letting that money fall to fund balance, funding another agency, whatever the committee's pleasure would be at that point. Okay. <clears throat> so, the so then the, the expenditures, <clears throat> have you, that 941,850 to visit Topeka, what is that number representing? So there's, there's two pieces to that calculation. The first piece is based upon $2 million in expected collections. Okay. We calculate, go all the way, go all the way down to the transfer column at the bottom. Mm -hmm. the, we calculate the payment to the Historic Preservation Fund as one-sixth of the $2 million, okay. less the 94 to Great Overland Station and the 106 to Riverbound Park. So that amount's calculated. We left the $200,000 appropriation to the general fund. That's included in the general fund side of our fiscal 14 budget. So a reduction there causes us to fall out of balance uh, in, the, in the general fund of fiscal 14. So are these figures then the reduction that takes out that 100,000? They're, they're correct. That's correct. Okay, so it'd be 941,850 to visit Topeka, 156,975 for the bid fund, 44, 44,850 to the Expo Center, 304,000. So you've done that calculation and reductions Correct. there. Correct. Okay. Okay, and, and this is the first that anybody's hearing about this. Is, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I emailed this to the group after our last meeting, but I can't blame you for not having read it. It was right before Thanksgiving, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schmidt, I've got a question for you, and I'm, I'm sure I'm missing something here in the calculations. Um, the Historic Preservation Fund, the fiscal year 2013 projected, um, which is one sixth of base revenue, and then the fiscal year 14 budget column shows an increase in the base but a reduction in the preservation fund when when you have standardized two hundred thousand dollar reduction which doesn't make sense to me and then we're increasing in the revised from that fiscal year 14. so the fiscal 14 budget carried forward the fiscal 13 budgeted amount, which was also incorrect, and that's our error. I, I think historically the city has plugged that number and then fixed it at the end of the year. And uh, going forward, we won't do that. We'll do the calculation based upon the revenue projections so that we're not causing ourselves an unexpected fund balance draw or an unexpected draw from uh, others' allocations after the fact. Okay, that makes sense. Jeff, the, uh, <clears throat> the 200000 that we have going to the Topeka Zoo slash general fund, 
that was already adopted as part of our budget that we adopted on August. It was, yes, sir. Okay, so if we were going to modify that, we'd have to go back to the council and do a, a budget amendment. Correct. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. Mr. Young, did you want to, uh, I know you wanted to talk to the committee. In light of this, do you want to make some comments? And I'll afford anybody else the opportunity as well. But. Thank you, Kurt Young, mm -hmm. uh, representing my fellow constituency from the <coughs> lodging industry, which I think there's a fairly good group here today. Uh, the only <coughs> comment I think that I would <coughs> offer we're again year to date this year sitting at about 54 percent occupancy <coughs> for the for the whole city for the whole industry here in Topeka and Shawnee County that obviously is not where any of us want to be in terms of, of travel and tourism in, in our area and I uh, I go back we'll, we'll continue to go back to my um, I hesitate to say my usual presentation, but my usual encouragement to you as transient guest tax members, uh, committee members, to look at this from the standpoint where we're talking about the possibility of reducing the expected revenue for 2014 from 2 million 150 to 2 million. Um, there is a way to raise that. There is a way to get it back up, and that's through increased occupancy and in what we call in the business uh, average daily rate. Those are the two things, the two measurements that affect the amount, at the end of the day, the amount of revenue to, that is collected through the transient guest tax fund. So if we ever expect and hope to have a continued upward trend of that transient guest tax revenue, We've got to continue to look for, look at the ways that we invest that money to begin with and put it where it's going to, to do that and accomplish either increasing the occupancy or, and the, the ADR, it's kind of a, a hand in hand. The ADR isn't going to increase typically until the occupancy increases. When your occupancy goes up, then you can command a little bit higher price on your rooms and as a result, the average daily rate goes up. So the two work together. And until we get our occupancy up on a par with everybody else, uh, even in our region, um, I, I, my best advice that I could give you is to help us by investing that money in places where it's going to, to in turn, increase occupancy. That 7% of a larger number in the industry is gonna put more money in the transient guest tax fund at the end of the year and uh, give us all more opportunities. <coughs> I do wanna put in a plug for the bid fund. I think we have, uh, demonstrated in the last couple of years since the bid fund was established that it has, that it has proven to be a real asset. Uh, Terry and his staff have done a, a good job of, um, of administering that, uh, the bid fund, as well as we've got what I think is probably one of the best marketing plans we've seen in recent years. So I'm in, in hopes that with with a good solid marketing plan and wise investment of the transient guest tax dollars in the first place, that when we're sitting here this time next year, we're talking about a completely different uh, uh, scenario than we have today. Um, I'd answer any questions that you may have, but that would be my, my pitch. Okay. Any questions of uh, Mr. Young? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, does visit mm. Topeka determine, I mean, <clears throat> do you see where you're getting money from and if it looks like that that entity is bringing in more, for example, I'll use TPAC, 
um, we had we were there for one of for Jerry Seinfeld and I saw people with shirts on from Salina you know all over the place so I guess my question visit Topeka is supposedly working with every entity for people to visit Topeka so is that something that you're tracking events that do bring in hotel night stays I'm going to let Terry come up here and address that a little bit. Mm -hmm. that we, it's a, that's a real tough nut to crack. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to accumulate the raw data on, on who's in our rooms in the industry. And between Visit Topeka and the industry, we at the property level try to do our best to track where people are coming from. Um, <coughs> It's, it's not a science by any means. It, it's very dependent upon the, the, the staff at the various hotel properties to be able to inquire and find out, but I don't know that there's truly a definitive mechanism in place at, at the property level to really, at the end of the day, say we had you know 20 people from Salina at the Performing Arts Center. So, but okay. we, we try to do it when we have special events in, um, you know, we, and we know we're going to have special events in, and there's a real conscious effort to, uh, I'll use Kansas Kids Wrestling as an example. We can pretty well tell you at the end of Kansas Kids Wrestling weekend how many people we had on our property for wrestling. But on a day-to-day -day basis, um, an event going on, whether it's at the zoo or the Performing, performing Arts Center or some other venue in town, unless we're, we've really been asked to track that <coughs> venue, uh, there's not, it's not a science. Yeah. Terry, do you want to piggyback on that? Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I, I can't answer that question. In your quarterly reports, we do present to you uh, the, the counts from our, our groups, from our motor coach groups that come into town to our conventions, our sporting events, we're able to track all those, uh, the success of it. We send out uh, weekly the, what we call a pickup report uh, where we send it out to our lodging partners and ask them how many rooms was filled by this event, how many rooms are filled by this. So we're able to track each one of them hmm. uh, and we're able to see the results of it. So if we did give them bid fund dollars, for instance, we're able to come back and say, okay, they were successful and they were, grow they were able to grow, or they weren't successful, and so we need to evaluate that in the future. As to the individual, uh, individual, it, it, as Kurt said, it's a little bit hard your, your general tourists to come into town. They don't, um, they'll come to our website, they get the information, they'll book a room uh, at one of the lodging partners. We don't touch them then. It's hard for us to, to be able to find them. That's where our surveying comes in a little bit. We're going to be able to survey at the front desk this next year, find out why they're here, how much we're going to try to find out their spending habits, we're going to try to find out how many was in their travel party, what they were here to do and see while they were in town. We do, though, through our STAR report uh, that we get each, uh, each week, um, STAR is the, where all the hotels report their numbers into this national database. They compile it, and we're able to see how many rooms were picked up on a given week, how many spending was done that week, so uh, a good example is Tough Mudder. Tough Mudder didn't go out and block all the hotel rooms. But we know Tough Mudder was the only big thing going on that weekend in September. And so when that Friday night was 93% occupancy, we were able to see Tough Mudder had a big part in doing that when the year before was running in the 40 percentiles. So we're able to gauge the success of those type of events that way that aren't tied to a block of rooms at some of the hotels. And it's your question. Yeah. Yes, okay. it did. So it, the bid fund then that you try to go out and get those attractions, I mean, if that's going to be reduced down to 156975 that might hurt getting the events. It will. It, it would give us a, a less bargaining uh, room there. We'd have less dollars to work with to be able to offer these groups. We also, uh, the third and fourth quarter, we're seeing a reduction in that fund. So to be able to cover our commitments. We've committed 150000 this year to these groups that are coming in the future. Uh, for instance, Sunflower Soccer, we've committed to that, uh, uh, you know, 20000 a year for that while they're here. 
Well, we, we don't pay that up front, it's due, but we'll have to reduce what we have to cover those reductions in the fund. So, um, Jeff, what was that, 8% or 12% each quarter, I think is what was projected. So, we'll have 12%, but we'll have to either cover that in the near future. Uh, so, we'll start next year with less dollars because of that reduction, because we've already committed those dollars. Mr. Colson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Terry, um, can we do a tough butter every week? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice. But, but, but are there are there a lot of because I know the tough butter has become quite popular. Do we have a list of those things that are happening around the country that we're not participating in? That maybe we could do a tough mutterish type of event. We, Ten times a year? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know that it'd be that successful. Okay, 20. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> uh, they try not to saturate the different markets, but there are some other ones uh, out there like Tough Mudder. Uh, there's some other type of sporting events uh, that, that we have on our radar that we're reaching out to them and trying to get them to show interest in Topeka. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm going to mess up the name, but. I won't even attempt the name, but there's another name out there like Tough Mudder uh, that's extreme sports that we have reached out to them. We've looked at some uh, some marathons. Uh, we've looked at some of those things, and, and they're on the radar. We're, and we're looking for some other sports besides uh, baseball, softball, uh, those things that we've become known as, and we're trying to branch out and break into some other sports. Uh, anybody Harry Potter fans? There's actually groups out there called Quidditch that don't ask me how to play, they run around on a broom and a field and all that, but there's ultimate frisbee, there's uh, that's played like football and uh, frisbee golf, those type of things that, that we're attempting to get them to come here and, and are showing interest. Uh, bocce ball, I think they bocce, bo ball. bocce ball is another one that, uh, that is showing some interest, those type of things. So. Uh, we're trying to branch out in our sports as well, uh, and uh, when Sunflower Soccer completes the facility, we look forward to selling that facility hard and bringing in some big soccer events too. I might just, to piggyback a second, just reinforce the fact that what I was referring to about it at the property level and being able to track mm -hmm. things was directed at just the leisure traveler uh, that's coming. The big events, as Terry's indicated, that we have helped fund, yes, it's a lot easier to track those, and we do a pretty good job of tracking those. But just knowing where Joe Citizen is traveling, it's, it's, some, it's a lot more difficult to track. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you both. <clears throat> Jeff, I've got a question. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> we're looking at revised figures based on uh, projected revenues not being quite as high as what we were looking at in August. Let's flip that around. What if uh, next summer we're looking at uh, revenues in excess of two million dollars? How do we how do we deal with that? Or is is well, fortunately, we've approved we've adopted a budget that went to the state that has expenditure authority that assumes two million four fifty in collections. And uh, two million five in expenditures, and we're <coughs> recommending here that you look instead at two million three thirty and a half in collections, and, and roughly the same amount of expenditures. So, if revenues did come in higher, this body um, would we'd have the full budget authority without even doing a budget amendment to spend up to the two and a half million, which is what's approved in the budget. And if we really blew the roof off. We could do a budget amendment based upon that, that new revenue that we had planned on okay. and increase the expenditure authority in that year. Okay, Mr. Colson. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'm going to violate my uh, fiduciary caution that has probably run my entire life, but I, I really appreciated Mr. Young's comments that um, we need more promotional activity, mm -hmm. we need more marketing activity. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's met Terry Cook knows that we're in for a, the e-ticket ride at, at, at Disney World because he's, he's got a lot of energy and we're going we're gonna to move at a fast pace. I would, while there's, there's a cautionary note here, I don't want to hamstring them coming out of the gate. Um, my belief is it's probably, though I love my finance guy, this might, this might be one do. of those times where, where we actually maybe toss the $100,000 caution to the wind 
budget at the full amount as anticipated up to this point. But cautionary note, we keep an eye on the revenue streams and if we get to mid-year and we understand that the money's not coming in, that we start cutting, recognizing it's gonna cost all these organizations the requirement to, to address these issues mid-year, which is tougher than doing it planning on. But if we're successful, if we do come up with a couple of music events, if we come up with the new, the new race, you know, all of these other activities that we're talking about could join an additional activity and, and maybe have that though. I understand what I'm saying and it's not words that I think have ever come out of my mouth before. <laughs> so um, I would just say that for this, this committee's, uh, we, we may want to be a little bit uh, more aggressive on, on this particular case, understanding that at the end of the day, while they will benefit it from initially, they will also pay the price at the end if it doesn't go well. So give them a chance to, you know, to, to, to prove them right. So by that, what you're saying is we could go ahead and just proceed on what we discussed in August? I think so, the 2100, you know, the 2100 as opposed to the $2,000, the $2, to two, 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 two million, million dollar cut. 20, yeah, 2.1 million versus the, the 2 million. Yeah. 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 And you won't get too much pushback from your finance director? Um, I'm gonna go take a real quick look at the organizational chart. <laughs> 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 Okay, I am really out of character today. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Cook, could I call you to the podium again? I'm going to uh, float a trial balloon here, and I know I'm catching off guard. I'm catching the committee members off guard. I'm catching staff off guard. So point so. the camera at you instead of me right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in the past, uh, well, as long as I can remember, you know, the transient guest taxes, in addition to giving money to visit Topeka, has made specific allocations to the Expo Center, Heartland Park, and TPAC. And every time we do that, I think to myself, and I've had others in the community ask me, recognizing that Heartland Park, Expo Center, and TPAC are unique venues and they have unique marketing needs. Um, what, what a marketing strategy for TPAC is definitely gonna be different than what Heartland Park requires. Yes. <clears throat> Nonetheless, um, what if, instead of making specific allocations to those three groups, why, what if we, knowing what, what money we've, we're, we're looking at, what if instead we give that money to visit Topeka and say to visit Topeka, recognizing how important Heartland Park, Expo Center, and TPAC are, and yet recognizing the unique marketing needs of those, of those venues. Can you and your staff, if we gave that money to you, could, could, could you work with those three entities to kind of get more bang for the buck in terms of helping them use that money to, to market their it, it, it strikes me that, that it's, it might be best if, if, if we have a, a comprehensive one group who does marketing for these transient guest tax revenue producing entities. I'm just kind of thinking out, just like this trial balloon, if we gave that money to visit, visit Topeka, how, what, what, would your, what would be your initial well, reaction the, to that? And, yeah, and can, the, can you kind of speak to that perhaps? The, the opportunity would, uh, now, Again, off the cuff here, sure, but uh, the the opportunity would be there for us to cross promote. Uh, for instance, um, I'll use uh, Heartland Park for an example. Uh, Heartland Park may be taking their dollars out there and advertising, advertising, advertising. Whereas if we're working together, uh, we could cross promote Topeka in general, <laughs> along with pushing the the track. Uh, I think there's some opportunities there. Uh, I'm not quite uh, up to speed what others have been using their dollars for. Um, I can, I hope it's okay I speak. Mr. Irwin and I have actually spoken uh, many times about working closely together and promoting the track. So I think it, uh, I think it could be a natural fit. Uh, in my estimation, I think we could work very closely together uh, to, to do those promotions. Uh, it gives us an opportunity um, to, as I say, to, to, to work together. I've, I've always, I'm a big believer in everybody working close together to, to go to one common cause. So if uh, we're promoting the track, it gives us the opportunity for those race, those race fans to learn 
what else there is to do in Topeka besides go to the roads. Uh, and then if we're out there marketing Topeka, we can then tag in, um, make sure Heartland Park is included as well. So they know we have a racetrack. Uh, you know, one of the one of the sad parts of it is uh, uh, we have 20 top-notch tr attractions in this city. And the weakness is, is people don't know about it. We've got to get the word out there to promote and advertise those attractions, package them together, and create a vacation. Um, we need dollars to do it. Uh, that's, the, that's the key. Uh, but uh, I, I see no problem in working together. I, I, I really am at a loss of what, uh, at this time, uh, the other entities do with their dollars. Um, so, but I, I can speak because I've had conversations with uh, Hartman Park. We, we had already had discussions about uh, cross-promoting mm -hmm. each other, so I think it would work smoothly. But one of the reasons I bring this up is um, I'm the mayor's appointee to the Expo Center Advisory Board. And <clears throat> every month we get to listen to H.R. Cook <clears throat> talk about various marketing strategies and, and the, for instance, the kid, kids wrestling. I remember we, uh, we went on a uh, trip out to I think Salina one year uh, to make a pitch to, to get kids wrestling. So I, I know there's already some coordination between Visit Topeka and, and Expo Center, and, and, and I'm glad to hear you're, uh, you're working with Mr. Irwin because those are, those are unique assets. I guess, I guess the, the point I'm making and wanting to make is that those are, those are unique assets that are, that are critical to the generation of transient guest tax. And do you feel like you, you're, you and your staff and your board would have the expertise to, to work with these, these three entities to, to produce a perhaps not a more coordinated marketing effort, but in a way maybe we can get more bang for the marketing buck, so to speak? I believe so. I believe we're, you know, we would, I would sit down with uh, Jan and we'd have some, some detailed discussions on uh, where he's seen the best use of those dollars, where how we can put together a, a plan using the, that allocation to, to drive more traffic to TPAC. Uh, we can do the same thing with uh, uh, HR. We're, we'll sit down, we'll have some detailed discussions with my marketing team, uh, myself and his staff. We'll, we'll look at where he needs the help. Uh, if he's already full for several events, that's probably not what we want to promote. We want to promote the ones where he needs the most help. Again, where we can promote the Expo Center, promote those events that he's having going on at the same time, I look forward to letting them know and telling them about uh, Topeka in general. <coughs> There's more to do once you're here to see that show than just to go to the Expo Center. You can go and do these other activities while in town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for the committee, it's 20 till 5. We have to be out here at 5 o'clock. We've got another uh, item on the agenda is historic preservation. Um, so um, what is it? we can either well, I maintain a motion from okay. Councilwoman Schwartz. Okay. Um, I'm going to move that we um, take the 60000 to the Expo Center and the 340000 to Heartland Park and move it in to visit Topeka. Um, and then I'm not sure why we have two funds for visit Topeka. They're bid fund. We, I mean, I think you're right that they could de determine. I'm not sure, I guess, maybe to leave it to their discretion as to how to spend Can I answer that real quick? Sure. We are very, very careful with the bid fund. It kept that in a separate bank account, separate allocations. Okay. That money is used for bidding on groups and events and sporting events to come to the city. Okay. We use not a cent of that for operations, not a cent of that for advertising. Mm -hmm. That is used directly for bidding on these events and encouraging them to come to our city. Right. So that's so why there's a separate allocation and we turn in a separate uh, um, paperwork to the city making sure that you're aware of how those dollars are allocated. So would you want to see that bid fund increased with um, the funds that we would normally give to the Expo Center and Harlan Park or would you want it all into the to visit Topeka fund? As the chair uh, said if we give it to you to do the marketing how would you like to see that? Oh I see what you're saying. Yeah. I think it should be allocated in a separate, be my advice. I, I, we would be, feel more comfortable keeping it separate so uh, you as councilmen know that those are going for bids for these organizations and groups that we're bringing in um, as well as the citizens. So it's very clear okay. and, and transparent of what those dollars are being used for. Okay. 
So my motion then is to move the 390,000 to visit Topeka, increase the 100,000 to the bid fund, and then the remainder to visit Topeka. Because they want to keep that separate. And then re keep the 10,000 to TPAC and say, I feel they do have a marketing mm. program that's. Okay, with all due respect, I'm totally lost. <laughs> this <coughs> 20, 20, 20, 20. <laughs> 20,000, yeah. So it's 340 and 60. So, Mr. Chairman, maybe I can talk. Yeah. My Please. understanding would be we would be doing a block grant to visit Topeka of 1,440,000. Right. A visit to Topeka bid fund of 175,000. And a separate allocation to TPAC for 200,000. Right. And then the rest of the allocations would stay the same. Correct. Okay. Break that down for me, Jeff. The uh, how much going? So be that to go to one million four forty. These two would go to there. Correct. Okay. So why why isn't TPAC being included in that? That that doesn't make sense. The motion was to exclude it. To put TPAC in there too. Let's put it all in there. Then my motion will be to put them all three in there. So one million four hundred sixty thousand to visit Topeka, one hundred seventy-five thousand to, to the bid fund. So this would be four hundred and ten thousand. So that would make that one one million four hundred and sixty thousand. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. To visit Topeka, mm -hmm. one hundred seventy-five thousand to the bid fund, and then the rest of the allocations stay, stay the same. Okay, that's correct. And Jenny, are you clear on that? Correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second it for the sake of uh, discussion. Sure. Go ahead. There, there is some discussion being requested from the audience. Sure. Um, Jan Tarr with uh, TPAC Executive Director. And, um, I am all for what we are talking about, but I want to make sure that we have a place at the table in working with Terry and with Topeka and where our, where our allocation or how those are going to be used in the money to make sure that we are visible <coughs> with, without just a flash So that we are able also to um, look at, um, as you said, in the bid fund, being able to bring in large racks. Because if we have the marketing power behind uh, bringing in large racks, maybe for sh shoe days, you know, uh, almost a festival, then we're able to we're able to get the large racks in, in the town. that are going to be national acts that we will have people coming in from um, regional folks, out of state folks, et cetera, that will stay the night. So I just want to make sure that we do have a place at that table. I'm, I'm fine with that, but I want to make sure I have a place at the table. Mr. I, Smith? I, I agree 100%, and that's why I actually had a couple questions for uh, Mr. Cook, as well as Mr. Young following that. Um, first, I've, I've seen visit Topeka's new marketing plan, which I also found quite impressive, as uh, Mr. Young noted earlier. How, how capable and how quickly um, do you feel that you'll be able to incorporate, I mean, we just added almost half a million dollars and, you know, three major facilities into that marketing plan. Is that something that you'll, you feel comfortable doing on this short notice? I do. Um, with the reduction in our third and fourth quarter allocations, we were having to reduce advertising next year anyway. So this will allow us to uh, to uh, partner with uh, Mr. Irwin. We'll be able to put some of our marketing back into place, advertising back into place. Uh, so we've got a lot of research already done. 
We will sit down. Uh, right when's your race season kick off? April. April. So, so we probably need to start promoting. I would say March time frame. So we've got the rest of this month. We've got January to put our plan together. Where we're going, what markets we're going to be hitting, uh, and how we can work together to do that. So I, I feel confident we have enough time to do so. Okay. And add, continuing on that on that notion, um, obviously. Jan has some legitimate concerns. How how are you going to how are we going to guarantee you know the proper place at the table and the proper allocation for these resources? Well, I look with these forward partners. to working with with TPAC. Uh, don't have any issues at all with it. I, I understood though. I thought that was a separate allocation from this. You're talking about oh, okay, okay. The motion. Um, I see doing the same thing. We're going to sit down. We're going to go through every issue and uh, everything that they have coming for this year. Uh, we'll analyze working with Jan and his team to see where they want those dollars allocated. Um, HR is not here today, but I can tell you that we'll do the same thing with him. We'll sit down. We'll we'll have some uh, marketing meetings where we'll break all the advertising apart. We'll see where the best use of those dollars are and bring in guests for each of those organizations. Um, I, I don't. I see them being, as I've shared with my discussion previously, with Mr. Irwin. I want him at the table. I want him allocate, looking and seeing the advertising before it goes out. I want him to know what's being what's being put together and him approving it in some way, signing off on it in some way that that's a good thing to promote his track as well. So, and I see working the same way with the the other two organizations. For now, yeah. Okay. Um, while you're up there, Terry, even though this was my my trial balloon, I'll, I'll be real honest. My reticence is exactly what Jan had mentioned that um, you know those those three entities have got have got to be at the table. They, um, I can always tell when we've got a race in Heartland Park because I can't get a decent place at a restaurant <laughs> and that makes me happy That's right. <laughs> I'm real I can always tell when it's a race weekend and um, you know and so I, I was thinking oh Mr. Mr. Colson you worked with this to peak on contractual provisos is is there is there room to put contractually some language in that um, maybe legal could, could weigh in to, to to put some language in there about how that, that that those three entities have to be quote at the table, so to speak, in terms of in, in terms of their um, not not that I not that I don't Understand. trust you, Terry. I, I do, and I please please take that. I the, I, I, but but I the, the the point that Jan mentioned and, and Mr. Schmidt mentioned is is my concern too. Is that we have to make sure that that those those three entities are definitely heard and not just lip service. And so. We, cer we certainly can. Here. We certainly. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. No, we ahead. certainly can add uh, an additional statement mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the contract. I would suggest to put in the contract that there will be a, a regular regular meeting uh, of of the of those specific groups. Um, I don't. I, I get a little bit reticent to start dictating as to what another organization needs to do from an operational perspective. But I think to ensure that the meeting happens, obviously, um, it would probably be a it is, in, it is in Visit Topeka's best interest to ensure that Heartland Park continues to be successful, that the Expo Center and, right. and, and uh, also TPAC. Um, but yes, I think we can certainly go as far to add an additional uh, bullet point into the language that there is a requirement for a regular meeting mm -hmm. for the specific purpose of doing what we talked right. about. Okay. Yeah, being, I can just sure. assure you a little bit that being the new guy in town, I'm not interested in making any minimes. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking what's best to promote uh, Topeka. Uh, if this council wishes us to go in that direction, I can guarantee you we're going to go in that direction, and we're going to we're going to work hand in hand to promote them the way that they feel is best, and the way we feel is best to drive tourism <coughs> here. Uh, it, 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 it's only beneficial to both of us uh, uh, to do so. So I, I have no reason to go a different direction and I can tell you that next year at this time if we don't do it I think you'll remember <laughs> yes, we will. I'd say that's a pretty good gauge thank you Mr. Schmidt did you have uh, Mr. Zarbo yes. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just one more thing. When we're talking about the, I guess, the allocations and now putting it all in one pot, um, is there a way that we're going to look at how those allocations could be re redistributed? I mean, honestly, twenty thousand dollars for us because we're a nonprofit. I get two for one anything that I do on most things anyway. You get what? I get two for one. So if I buy one ad, I'm getting two ads for you know free, whether it's in, in or, or I, I get a nonprofit rate in my magazines oh. that I'm doing. So that's helping me in that way. But I'd like to look at how this, we're putting it all in one pot again, and how we would be able to reallocate and some of this money. Uh, I would at least like to see us being matched with Um, would you feel more comfortable if if we modified this to to keep TPAC as a separate um, because it is a nonprofit uh, as opposed to the other two the other two entities? Well, I don't know. Again, I, I I think we need to keep it in one pot. We get a little bit bigger bang for our buck in the way that we're doing it. Can we get bigger? Can I get a bigger bang for what we can do as one organization? So, of, of going out there and, and, and selling what we can do, putting it more in the in the trade magazines that we need to, to do. Because right now, I'm you know with that with that pot of money, I'm I, I'm putting it to maybe two or three trade magazines a year. So where I'm looking at really going after promoters. So again, I'm just. Looking at the allocations, if we're all good, and if it's if it's about visit Topeka and stability of what we're all doing, we're huge. We're a big impact. We're going to be a big impact on what happens downtown and in the future. So we're at the same. I guess I'm at the same gate too. I'm pushing for everything. To get more. If you look at our season that we've only had in fall, I've doubled that by forty percent just the fall. I'm going to do that again in the, in the winter and the spring. So I'm doing the best that I can with our allocations that we're getting and our, our private funding that we're bringing in, our donors that are, are helping us, our corporate. We're going to be aggressive at doing that, but I'm asking that this committee step up and help us in marketing TPAC in the way that it needs to be TPAC uh, marketed and do it through Visit Topeka. Schwartz? Is that <clears throat> something that we could put in? I mean, I, I think that's there's a lot of discussion here as to funds and how much goes here and how much goes there. Is that something, if we give it to Visit Topeka, because we have discussed that it would be really more um, intelligent or it, it just makes more sense to have one entity that is going to help to promote Topeka, and that would be Visit Topeka, and that you would sit at the table in that decision as to how much goes to the expo, how much goes to TPAC, how much goes to the Heartland Park, and then that would be part of the contract that we said that we wanted the proviso, I mean, we don't need a proviso because we can put it in the contract mm -hmm. as to, you know, um, uh, how we're getting heads on beds to, to pay for this. So it, it is, would you feel comfortable if it was written into the contract that the, the city would have then with Visit Topeka as to, and then have that opportunity to sit down with Visit Topeka to, to talk about the, the amount of funds that would be allocated. Absolutely. So, um, I don't think we need to change the amendment then, do we? I mean the motion? The motion, yeah. The motion no, it's amendment. just a, it's just a block allocation, block. correct, You're right. Jeff? Right. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got four minutes left before we have to adjourn. What does the committee want to do? Thank, want to vote? thank you very much. Oh, sure, I'm, I'm sorry. Does the committee want to vote on tonight, or do we, we uh, excuse me, Bill? Do we need to, I'm sorry we didn't get to Ms. Dorick. Um, do we need to take some action before the end of the year? Preference. You want to vote on the motion, or you want to? I I would I would sorry. 
No. I would prefer to vote on the motion. I think we need to get that allocation right. made. It's yes. been late enough okay. already in the process. Any further discussion? All right. All right, let's vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, Bill, let's try to get first. Uh, if you're sure you're okay, I mean, we can try to get something set up before the end of the year. If you, if that would be convenient. If you want to try something next week, we're ready. Uh, just <clears throat> come back next week. Okay. We can't push it to the week. Okay. What's the committee's availability next week? We're looking at Thursday. Yep. Thursday or Friday. Does any of you know offhand whether? I am available uh, both Thursday and Friday at four. Blaine? Friday's better for me. Friday okay. works for me. Friday, Friday the twentieth. Uh, yes. Bill, will you be in town next Friday? Yes. Why don't Mr. Colson? Does that meet with your approval? It, it meets with my approval. It won't meet with my attendance. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, oh, why don't we go ahead and schedule um, 4 o'clock next Friday. Transient guest tax to consider. Is that okay with you, Bill? Yeah, I just soon kind of keep moving, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can kind of clear, clear a calendar. Okay, 5 o'clock, we need to get out of here. Is our motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all.